Hello and welcome to this Property Hub University course. I'm Rob B and I'm joined by Rob D and we're going to look at the 18-year property cycle and explain to you exactly what it is and how you can use it to make better investment decisions. So what are we going to learn? We're going to look at why property prices are cyclical. We're going to look at the different stages of the cycle and what they are. We're going to teach you how to recognize each stage as it begins, which is really powerful. And then we're going to teach you how to use the cycle to avoid expensive mistakes and generate huge wins. Okay, Rob said something really brief but really important in there. It said, we're going to see why property prices are cyclical. And a lot of people don't realize that property prices are cyclical. Just knowing that and understanding why is going to make a huge difference to your investing. So why are prices cyclical? Why is there this property cycle? Well, Here's the economics bit, so concentrate. The reason is the amount of land is unlike any other commodity. The amount of land is fixed. You can't create more land. What that means is as the economy grows, demand for land increases. So businesses expand. They want more space for their premises. People are feeling wealthier. They want bigger houses or there are more people to house. That creates extra demand for land. And of course, that puts an upward pressure on land prices, straightforward supply and demand. But here's the unique bit. There can't be more supply of land. You can't physically create anymore. And in countries like the UK in particular, yes, there is a lot of land that you could build on, but people don't want every last field concreted over. And there's no point going and building on some land in the absolute middle of nowhere somewhere. The demand for land is in cities where the supply is even more constrained. So what that means is demand is increasing, but there can't be enough extra supply to meet that demand. Therefore, land prices rise. And land prices rise faster than incomes are rising. Because, of course, if there is more demand for computer programmers, then more computer programmers can be trained and there can be an increase in supply to meet that demand. So incomes will rise, but there's, they're not held down by the same constraint that land is. Now, people see this. People see that by investing in land, you can actually make more money than investing in lots of other things. And here, when we're saying land, it's not just land. It's, of course, the things that are built on it. So if you're buying a house, then you are buying land. So people see this and they speculate on prices growing even further. So there's both the natural demand from the economy expanding and additional demand from people seeing that property and land prices are growing and buying because it's going up. And banks are more than happy to cash in on this. So mortgages to buy property become more easily available because banks can make a lot of money lending against property and against land because people are so enthusiastic about it. People are really keen to borrow and banks are more than happy to lend. This carries on up to a point, but there comes a point where prices are unsustainably high. There's kind of this moment where everyone looks around and goes, oh, hang on, why are we paying so much for this? This can't possibly last. And at that point, you get a crash. So when it's explained, it's pretty obvious, but people tend not to see it. There's a reason why prices grow. There's a reason why prices start to grow even faster. And there's a reason why it all comes to an end. And there is always a crash. So this cycle is predictable. It always happens. And it doesn't just happen because you can go back and you can look at patterns of it happening in the past. It happens because there are firm economic reasons driving this cycle. Now cement your learning by taking a quiz. Then we'll move on to the next module. So what are the stages of the cycle? Well, you'll be pleased to know, reasonably straightforward. So in the beginning, normally over the first seven years, you have what's called the recovery phase. And the recovery phase is a recovery because what's happened just prior to this is you've had a crash and this is a period of slow moderate growth over this period as the market starts to recover but towards the end of this recovery you have what's called the mid cycle dip now notice the word dip this isn't a crash and it doesn't last for very long as the graph shows you but it does occur nearly every single time but it's the consequences of that dip which are really interesting. Lots of things happen during that dip, which we're going to talk about, but the result of it is the explosive phase. And that's where you can see huge growth. But after huge growth comes the correction or the recession phase. And that's where property prices tumble and then stagnate 
for normally around four years. So that's the 18 year property cycle. That's how it looks. Quite simple there, but we need to go into much more detail to explain how each stage works. But Rob, I think we need to raise an important point now. Yeah, we do. There's something that can be easily missed. But when you look at that chart, you'll see that when you get the crash and it bottoms out, it bottoms out at a higher level than the starting point of the cycle. So each cycle starts from a higher baseline than the last one. What does that mean? Well, it means that the long term trend of prices is always upward because it goes up It goes down a bit, but not as low as it was to start with. So you get this long-term upward trend. But along the way, you get big peaks and crashes. So you'll often hear people saying things like, property prices always go up. You're safe in property because prices always go up. And yes, that is correct. Prices do, over the long term, always go up. But if you zoom in, you'll see that they don't just go up in a nice, smooth, straight line. You get these booms and you get these crashes along the way. And by understanding the phases of the cycle, you can be much smarter than just buying property because eventually it's going to be worth more. You can time your purchases, you can time your disposals, and you can do far better than if you just buy on the basis that prices always go up. So we're not saying there's no point buying property because eventually it'll come back to the same point it was. It will end up higher, but along the way, there's a lot that goes on. So I think we need to dig into each of these cycles in a little bit more detail and see what drives them, why it happens, and what you should be doing at each point in the cycle. So let's start with the recovery phase. So prices are just bottoming out after the crash. Some amateur investors are are selling before prices fall further. Big mistake. The smart investors are getting stuck in and buying distressed assets. Banks, however, are reluctant to lend, and you will find lending a challenge. Not impossible, but it won't be easy. But the upside is yields, the return you're making on your property, are really high at this point, the highest point, because property prices have just come down. So a really attractive time to buy. Few people do, because you have to be brave. You have to be first in. You have to be ahead of the trend. And not many people have the confidence to do that. It's the informed investors, the ones that understand value in property, the ones who understand market cycles, they're the ones that get stuck in at this point. But they are in the few, and that's why they do so well. Over time, that will change, but right now, most people are scared off. So from that recovery phase, we move into what's often called the mid-cycle dip. So prices have been rising gradually as the recovery gets underway. These early investors, the the smart money comes in, they start buying up these distressed assets, they kind of put a floor under prices. And from there, you start seeing prices gradually creeping up as more and more people look at these high yields and go, actually, you know what, I don't think things are going to fall any further, I'm going to get involved. You see confidence gradually returning. You see banks starting to lend again as they can see that prices aren't going to fall any further. And so if therefore, if they lend, they can secure it against an asset that's going to at least stay steady in value. You'll see the growth happen first in economic centres, in places where there's lots of industry, in capital cities, and you'll see the growth ripple out from there. But once this has been happening for a little while, you get this mid-cycle dip. You've had the steady growth, but then it seems like the growth is coming to an end because the people who got in early have started to take their profits and the confidence which is already quite fragile stumbles for some reason there's some kind of event or some kind of factor that makes people doubt what's going to happen with property prices so the memory of the crash at this point is still fairly fresh so it doesn't take much to knock people's confidence especially when you couple that with the earliest investors getting out of the market so you see this mid-cycle dip now now if you're not aware of the cycle it looks like we could be in for another crash at this point because property prices start to fall. But if you know about the cycle and you look to the diagram, then you can see that actually something very different is coming next. Now cement your learning by taking the quiz. Then we'll move on to the next module. So next up, the phase everyone gets excited about, the explosive phase. This is where you'll see multiple things happening. Huge building projects, very grand building projects. Some, later on in the cycle, extravagant projects. Enthusiastic media headlines. You'll see like property boom on the front pages quite frequently. You're going to see that banks are easing up 
and are actually even keen to lend again. They don't want to miss out. There's lots of money in the market and they want a piece of the action. Prices rise and they rise quickly. It's not uncommon to see double-digit growth in many of the towns and cities across the country. And amateur investors are attracted by the prospect of further property rises, particularly later on in this period. But unfortunately, towards the end of this part of the cycle, the last two years of this seven-year window, we have the winner's curse. And that's when the real amateurs pile in. They've seen it all happen before them. Property is a sure thing. They're going to make their fortunes, become property millionaires. But unfortunately, they are buying at the absolute worst time. The explosive phase is exciting and you can do very well during this period of the cycle, particularly the first half of it. But don't get involved in the last couple of years. That's when you should be taking stock, but we'll talk about that more in a bit. Because before we get there, we've got the scary bit. Yeah, the scary bit is the recession phase. And no one likes prices falling, but the really scary bit is it happens very suddenly. So you have this winner's curse, the final part of the explosive phase. And during this, people are not making rational decisions. Like Rob said, everyone's seeing the riches. It's a sure thing. They're going to be millionaires. It doesn't matter how much you're paying for a property because next month it's going to be worth more. You'll quite happily pay over the odds because it'll be cheaper to get that property now than it will be to wait for a few months. Because that's not being driven by anything sensible or logical, it's only being driven by confidence. Suddenly, that confidence evaporates. Everyone looks around them and goes, hang on, why are we paying so much money for this studio flat or whatever it is? When people realise that actually this doesn't make any sense, confidence disappears almost overnight and prices plummet. This is what's so scary. It's not the fact that prices drift up and then prices drift back down. For a while, they are drifting up and drifting down, but you get this explosive phase where they're just going crazy, and then you've got the recession phase where it turns very suddenly. So if you get caught on the wrong side of this, it is not pretty. Prices fall, and that means that over-leveraged investors get bankrupted. So because everyone's so enthusiastic, banks get enthusiastic as well. They start lending ever more money against ever more expensive property. We saw it in about 2006 and 7. Property was more expensive than ever, yet banks would lend you pretty much 100% of the money that you needed to buy a property. So they're taking huge gambles. When prices start to fall, you get these investors who were already highly leveraged are now massively over leveraged. They can't meet their obligations anymore and they are bankrupted. As a result of all these things, you get banks taking losses, you get people going bankrupt, you get prices plummeting, the media goes nuts. The media loves this. There's nothing more exciting than a bad news story. And so the headlines are really apocalyptic. It seems like it's going to last forever. It seems like nothing is ever going to be okay again, because there's all this stuff to work through. Everyone is so negative. Everyone is so scared. It seems like your prices are never, ever going to get back up to their peak. But that's not the case. As we've seen, every cycle starts from a higher level than the previous one. So it's a real roller coaster. But in fact, at the end of this recession phase, when prices have bottomed out and everyone is scared, that takes us back to the beginning. That is exactly the point at which you should be buying. But very few people do. So those are the stages of the cycle. We've already hinted at how you can make use of them. But Let's really dig in and make sure that you understand how to make use of this new knowledge of the property cycle. Now cement your learning by taking a quiz. Then we'll move on to the next module. So how to use the cycle? Let's start with the basics. Don't panic because prices are falling. You'll know they'll come back. People will tell you that this is it for property, but you've seen it before and you know now what's going to happen again. Don't put yourself in a position where you're forced to sell at the wrong time. If you know what's going to happen, don't go aggressive at the wrong periods. You can be aggressive, but at the right times. So don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be punished. And it basically means not overextending yourself during that winner's curse phase. The majority of the rest of the cycle are decent times to buy. Some very good times to buy. But it's that small window is when you want to stay away. The rest of the cycle, you can do well for different reasons. But in that period, that's time to take stock and take advantage of what's to come. And do not 
rely on the media. They'll always say exactly the wrong thing. They'll give you the wrong advice and the wrong lead on what's happening. Follow the cycles, get yourself educated, give yourself confidence and take advantage. That's the basics. If all you do is avoid buying during that small window when prices are getting out of control and everyone's overpaying, then you'll do fine. You'll remove a lot of the risk and over the long term, you'll do very well. That alone shows the power of the property cycle. But there's a lot more that you can do as well if you want to, if you want to get a little bit more advanced. So you can use the cycle to know when to sell. You can sell in during that point when everyone else is buying. So if you've built up a bit of a portfolio and you've got some properties that aren't performing as well, everyone's got properties that do well and others that turn out to do not as well as you thought. Well, that winner's curse phase in the end of the, of the real explosive phase is the perfect time to offload those properties because anyone will buy anything at inflated prices. So you can make sure that you're selling when everyone else is buying. You can also Boost your cash reserves and make sure that you're getting credit on good terms when times are good and everyone's excitable because you know that it's not going to last. You can be ready for the bargains that are to come. So by selling properties, you can be generating cash that you can use later. And because banks are so keen to lend at that point, you'll find it a lot easier to get credit on good terms. So by doing those things, you're not just going in and buying any old rubbish. You're actually shoring up your position, not just to make sure that you survive the next part of the cycle. But you can really take advantage of it. And you can take advantage of it by buying when everyone else is selling. Like I said, it happens quickly. And there's a real panic around. Everyone wants to sell, no one wants to buy. That means that there are bargains around. That doesn't mean that you need to catch absolute rock bottom. You can wait and you can see that things have bottomed out and have started to tick up a little bit. You don't have to get in at the absolute lowest point. And you don't have to get out at the absolute highest point. But if you're making use of the cycle, you don't have to be exactly right on your timing. You just have to be roughly right. You just have to be in the right phase. That's all you have to do. And you're going to radically outperform everyone who is unaware of why property prices move in the predictable way that they do. So who would like some superpowers? Well, me. So understanding a cycle gives you property superpowers because you'll know when and why property prices are going to go up and how they go up in the long term, which results in you having faith that they'll continue to do so because you understand the mechanics behind it. You'll understand why there are always crashes along the way, so you won't buy at the wrong time. It's always going to happen, but they're predictable. And most of all, you can safely ignore the media because you know what's really coming next. The 18-year property cycle isn't there to show off to people how fantastic you are at predicting the future. It's there to empower you. It's there to help you make good decisions. It's there, ultimately, if you do it right, change your life financially. It's an incredibly powerful tool. And if you understand the 18-year property cycle and what plays out, then that puts you in a very powerful position. So there you go. I hope your mind is at least slightly blown by all that. You're probably looking back at the past and things that you can remember in property in a slightly different way now and seeing the pattern that in hindsight was there all along. But it's only when you've got this framework to use that you can really make sense of it all. It really is one of the most powerful ideas in property investment. So if you want to learn more about it, go to the Property Hub website and use the site search there. Search for Property Cycle and you'll find lots of other material that will help you extend and deepen your knowledge of the cycle so you can start to take advantage of it. Now, just take the final quiz and collect your badge for completing this course. Then get started on another one.